You know how to build a simple application with Spring Boot, but do you know how to build an app that is highly available, that can scale, and that can handle millions and millions of data records? Have you ever wondered how you'd build an app like that? Well, I'm very excited to announce this Code With Me series, where we're gonna be building a full Spring Boot application end-to-end. -end. This project that we're gonna build is called Better Reads. It's a kind of a clone of Goodreads, which is an app which allows you to track the books that you've read. Well, this one, the clone is called Better Reads. Why is it better? Because we are building it. The focus of this Code With Me series is to build an app which can scale and handle large amounts of data. Okay, this is not a typical YouTube Hello World tutorial. We are dealing with large and large amount of data. The intention is to build an app which can store a catalog of every book ever published in the world. Okay, every single book ever published in the world, we are going to save it and we're gonna expose it as a catalog in our application called Better Reads. And we will allow people to browse through the catalog, mark a certain book as read, they didn't read, they rate it like zero to five stars. And they can track a progress of what are the books they're currently reading or what they've recently read, okay? We wanna be able to do all this at scale. We're gonna be building an architecture which is highly available and stay performant for handling millions and millions of data records. Let me walk you through the features of the app that we're gonna be built. This is the final state of the app. I've recorded all the, the whole process of me uh, working on this thing. So kind of this is what we have at the end. And from the next video on, you're gonna start the whole journey from the very beginning. So here we have the homepage where you can log in via GitHub. We have an OAuth login where somebody can log in via GitHub or they can search for a book. So let's say I'm gonna search for Lord of the Rings. I can hit enter and I'm gonna see a bunch of books that match that search criteria, all right? So I can search for my name and uh, you will find a certain book that a certain somebody has written. Um, let's say I'm, um, I'm actually reading Woodhouse right now. So let's say I search for Jeeves and now here are a bunch of uh, Jeeves novels by uh, P.G. Woodhouse. So let's say I click on one of them, right? I click on view book. It's gonna show me a page for that book. It has a uh, cover art, it has the title, the author, some description, and then there is again a call out here which says you can log in to track this book, okay? So this login shows up in the homepage as well. I can go back to the homepage by clicking on this menu here. You notice how fast this experience is? It is designed to be fast and not have it slow down by the fact that we literally have every book ever published saved in our database, all right? So this is the architecture that we're gonna build to make that individual page load super fast and allows it to scale no matter if we have 10 users or like hundreds of thousands of users. So I'm gonna do a login this time, all right? So I'm gonna click on this one, which says login via GitHub. And now it is going to show me a dashboard which shows all of the books that I'm currently reading, okay? If you haven't logged in with GitHub before, it's gonna show you the GitHub OAuth pop-up and then you can say, okay, I wanna give permission for this Better Reads app to be able to see your email, which is basically the only access that this app needs from GitHub. So here are some books that I'm currently reading. I'm gonna go back to the Jeeves book and um, mark that book as something that I'm uh, I'm currently reading, all right? So I started reading this book. You see here, now that I've logged in, it's gonna give me this form with a bunch of uh, controls where I can specify like what, am I reading this? I finished reading it or whatever, right? So let's say I just finished reading this book today. So I'm gonna say I started reading this book yesterday and I finished reading this book today. Uh, status is finished and uh, I really like this. So this is a five star book. So I'm gonna hit that and click submit and now it has saved that information about this book. And now if I go back to my dashboard, it's gonna show me the book that I've finished over here, but the one that I'm currently reading still shows at the top. So, because I'm currently reading it, right? It shows up over here, this one I have finished reading, this one was something I'd finished earlier, so this thing shows up at the top in you know, reverse chronological order. So this is a, a brief tour of the app. The functionality of the app itself isn't as important as the amount of data that we're dealing with. We are literally dealing with millions and millions of rows of data 
and millions and millions of books published. We are able to serve this up at scale for a large number of users, all right? So this is the app we're gonna build. Now, what are the technologies being used here? We're gonna be using Spring Boot for building the web application itself. Now, when it comes to the database, we are not going with a relational database. We're gonna be using Cassandra for this. And we're gonna be using a hosted Cassandra instance. So you don't have to install Cassandra on your machine. We're gonna be using a service by Datastax called AstraDB, which is a hosted Cassandra instance. You can sign up for free and use the services. They have a pretty generous free tier. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up and connect to a Spring Boot application. Now, if you're not familiar with Cassandra, it's a NoSQL database, which can be used as a columnar database, just like you have a relational table, like you have all these columns, you can use it like that. You can use it as a document database. You can use it as a key value store. So it's pretty flexible. And uh, Cassandra is a very popular choice when you're trying to pick an application database which can deal with the large amounts of data, right? For something like this, right, for better reads, you want to save all the book information in the world. You don't want to stick them all into one table in a relational database because that's going to be slow. And if you were to connect it to a user, for example, like user read a book, like how many books are read by a single user? Well, try imagine trying to do a join between a user table and this books table, which contains a gazillion records. It's not going to scale, all right? So Cassandra allows you to build an application like this and have that scale and also have it be performant with that huge amount amounts of data that we're dealing with over here, right? So that's the reason why I'm gonna pick Cassandra for this. Cassandra also scales up or down based on the load. So if your application becomes really popular and you have a huge number of users, well, no problem, you can have Cassandra. And in our case, the Astra DB scale up or down based on the number of users that you have. So that's the application, that's the database. Now, how about security? We have a OAuth login, right, with GitHub, and I'm gonna be using Spring Security for this. That should also come as not a surprise if you've been following this channel. And I'm gonna be using Timeleaf for rendering the view that you see over here. All these pages are being rendered via Timeleaf. And for connecting the Spring Boot application to Cassandra, I'm gonna be using the Spring Data Cassandra project. There is a library that you can use to have your Spring Boot application connect to Cassandra and retain a lot of the, the model-based interaction that you get with JPA, right? This is not JPA because there's not a relational database, but the kind of model, the repository pattern that you have with JPA, you kind of get that with Cassandra as well. So we're gonna be using the, the repository pattern for connecting to the, Cassandra, the hosted Cassandra instance on our data stacks and have our Spring Boot connect to that database. There are of course other ways you can have a typical Spring Boot project connect to Cassandra. One alternative option is to use the Stargate project. So Stargate is an open source project which you can deploy and have that talk to Cassandra and Stargate is gonna expose REST APIs or GraphQL APIs that back the Cassandra database. So you don't even have to connect to that database directly, you can just call another API. But that Stargate API is basically uh, exposing the data that you have in your Cassandra instance and exposing it as APIs. So your application which needs the data doesn't talk to Cassandra directly, it talks to the Stargate APIs. So there are a lot of options here. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Spring Data Cassandra project so that we can use a repository pattern to connect to Cassandra. Okay, so what are the things that you need to get started? Well, first, you need to have Java and some IDE installed on your machine, JDK and some IDE installed. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code to build this whole thing, but you don't have to do that. You can pick any Java IDE you're comfortable with. You can use IntelliJ, you can use Eclipse. It really doesn't matter, right? The basic functionality is kind of the same in a lot of these IDEs. The second requirement is you need to create an account on Datastax. It's a free account. Uh, I'm gonna guide you through the process of creating that account. You can just sign up with your Google ID or GitHub ID, just one click and then you're in, right? Uh, and you don't have to pay uh, money. You don't have to you know, connect your credit card. This is gonna be entirely free. You can follow along this whole course, the whole Code With Me series, by just a free account. I have a link in the description that you can click to create your free account and then just follow along as I code this application. Um, that is something that I would highly recommend. As with the other Code With Me series, I'd like to mention that this is not 
a series of entertainment videos, right? This is literally titled Code With Me, right? I would like you, I would urge you to actually code with me. Open your editor, follow along the steps. This is where you can make the most of the series. You can, of course, sit back and watch, but you're not gonna get the most out of it. You get the most by actually coding, by following along as I do it. Pretty much every line of code that's written in this app, I'm gonna do this on video so you can follow along. I also share the GitHub repository in the description that you can use as a reference in case you're stuck or something isn't quite working. You can look at the code in the GitHub repository and see where you're going wrong, okay? There are 16 videos in this Code With Me series. Each video is around half an hour to, I think some of them might even go up to an hour, okay? So this is a lot of intensive coding that we're gonna be doing. I hope you're excited. I'm going to be releasing one video every three days, okay? So it's enough time for you to digest and catch up in case you missed some of those. Uh, every three days, you're gonna get a new video released on this channel. So make sure you follow along and code with me step by step so that you can make the most out of it and you're gonna learn. By the end of this course, you're gonna learn how to build a, an app which is highly scalable highly available and you have confidence during and deal with large amounts of data and serve your users efficiently and in a performant manner, right? If you can build an app which stores the information of every book ever released, well, that should give you some confidence that you can handle a lot of other big data applications. I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to outline the, the process of deciding what the app requirements are and from there going to the architecture. Now we have seen what the app looks like. I'm going to take you back to the beginning. We're going to rewind back in time where at the beginning of the idea of this app comes into the picture. I'm going to think out loud and craft the requirements and the design of this app in front of you so that you can watch the thought process and follow along. Go ahead and set up the requirements, Java and an IDE, and set up your Datastax account from the link in the description. And then I'll see you in the next video when we get started building the Bitter Reads application.